Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Build Your Copywriting Business Podcast. Hey there, Kate. Hello, hello. Hello. Okay, guys. Today, um, we are going to get into technique a bit. Um, you know, we, you know, we like to do a nice balance between business building, technique, talking to students, all kinds of mindset, all that stuff. Today, we're digging deep into technique, uh, and we're going to talk about the concept of a hook, why hooks are so important, but also what makes hook different from clickbait. Nobody wants to be clickbait, right? So what are the differences? Where's the line? Exactly. Exactly. So Kate, what, what is a hook and why is it important? A hook is, I always feel so much pressure when you ask me these questions. I know. Like and I never calling on a I, student. I never warn you in advance either. <laughs> I know you know the answer. It's all the things I know, but then I suddenly, my mind goes blank. Um, a hook is so important because it's the first thing someone, it's what gets your reader to read, hopefully more of your copy. It is the thing that grabs attention. It's designed to get them hooked, hence its name. Um, and so Think of a headline on a, if you're writing content a, on a content piece or a headline on a landing page or a homepage or a subject line would be your hook on an email mm-hmm. because that's the first thing they're going to read there mm-hmm. on a social media post. It's that first line of copy, potentially also on your image. There's a lot of, depending on how things are laid out and where, mm-hmm. where your copy is going in different elements, but basically the first thing that you think someone's going to read and their eyes going to be drawn attention to. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and like you were saying, it, it's the call it a hook because the concept is that you hook someone, you reel them in uh, like a fisher person would. I was going to say fisherman, but then it, that didn't sound right. Cause you don't say mailman, you say mail carrier, uh, fisher carrier. Anyway. So a hook is by definition, in order to hook them in, it has to be something that's genuinely interesting or intriguing to that target audience. So it might be a, a, uh, an interesting statement, a provocative statement. It might be a question that interests them. It, it opens a loop that they want closed. So here, and I know Kate has some examples, but just off the top of my head, you know, starting, starting an ad with, um, if you want to know exactly how I 40 x my business's revenue, read on. Mm. That's going to be interesting to the target audience, to business owners, and they are going to want to know, likely, how they can also 40 x their business's revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the ones that, just to use a filthy rich writer example, uh, that you wrote the, I, I, I'm going to, it's not, this is not the exact hook, so I apologize, but it's it, my, my embarrassing swimming story and what you need to know or something to that effect. That's the subject line of one of the emails in our, in our funnel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that one's just so intriguing because I'm like, Ooh, what embarrassing story and what do I need to learn from it? There's yeah. a, a lot of curiosity that that mm-hmm. incites. And I think it actually, not to correct you, I apologize, but I think it's my embarrassing swimming story and how it matters to you or something along those lines, because it needs to be something that catches people's attention, catches people's attention and intrigues them, but it can't just be something, it has to be something that is that matters to them. Yes, we might get some openings from ju- uh, some email opens from just my embarrassing swim story. I have a lot of embarrassing stories, so I'm happy to share them all, but in order f- to catch the most amount of people, we have to connect it back to back to our readers' desires and and goals and needs and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So some other examples. Um, numbers are always, I feel like, make effective hooks just because people latch on to to numbers. But I feel like they also have to have something else with it. So for example, um, five portfolio mistakes that you don't want to make on your own portfolio. Something mm-hmm. like that. I wouldn't repeat the word mm-hmm. portfolio, so don't use that as an example. But that idea of, oh, what are what are the five mistakes or five mistakes? Are you making the, any of these five mistakes on your mm-hmm. portfolio? Mm-hmm. Um, Six of the best places in Greece that no one's mm-hmm. visiting yet. Something like that. And again, that would be to a travel audience, uh, maybe a more uh, adventurous travel audience or the kind of a travel audience that wants to explore new places. Mm-hmm. And I think with that, that example too of like no one's been yet or um 
along those same lines, if it was uh, five five villages and secret villages in Greece that no one's heard of. So that idea of like you're sh- letting them in on a secret that no mm-hmm. one else knows about. Mm-hmm. Um, with the the mistakes example, that's kind of getting into tapping into a little bit of fear uh, emotion of, oh, am I doing this wrong? Um, and no mm-hmm. one wants to be doing anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, questions can work as well. Mm-hmm. Are you tired of paying too much for your Facebook ads? Well, the implication is going to yes. be that, yes, I am. And you're going to tell me more about how not to pay so much for my Facebook ads. Are you sick and tired of X, Y, Z? Now, obviously, we're giving you a bunch of different examples. You don't want to use the same examples again and again and mm-hmm. again. But these examples are designed to get you to think in terms of what could be a hook that would draw people into the rest of whatever your piece of copy is. Mm-hmm. And so I know CCA students are going to be wondering, well, how do I, if I want to lead with the benefit, how do I lead with the benefit and also do a catchy hook? Um, And there is a way to do that. So, you know, with some of these examples, um, the benefit of five portfolio mistakes that you don't want to make on your own portfolio would be, okay, I'm going to, you don't want to make, I don't want to make these. So therefore the benefit is if I read this, I'm not going to make these mistakes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have have stronger a portfolio. Exactly. The kind of portfolio that's going to get clients interested in working with me. And so the thing about a hook is you can't have a hook on its own. The hook has to bring people in, but it also has to get paid off and it has to get paid off in a genuine way. If I say the five, the five biggest mistakes that you, that people make in a portfolio, either when people keep reading or maybe people click through or something along those lines, they should get the five mistakes. Or if I say, are you tired of paying too much for your Facebook ads? Read on. They should learn how not to pay for, to pay more for their Facebook ads, or at least it should get them to the place where they can learn more about it. Maybe you give some details and they click through it to a landing page, something like that. But if you are, if you're giving some kind of a hook, you have to actually pay it off. You can't use a hook and then launch into something else because you're going to lose the trust of that target audience. You know, if you say the, my accountant told me to never do this, but I did it anyway. And I saved $30,000. If people open up that or keep reading that email or wherever it is, if they keep reading that email and that information isn't actually in there, you're going to annoy people and you're going to burn up their trust and they're going to start deleting those emails. Again, maybe this is things you're writing for your client and then you're burning up that client's trust with their target audience. So if you you put a hook in there, you have to pay off the hook, which gets into kind of the second part of this discussion. What makes clickbait different from hooks? Because at first blush, they can sound similar, right? Mm-hmm. It's exactly the opposite of what you're saying. Of you have a great line, you have a great hook, and then you don't pay it off. That becomes clickbait. Is when you don't pay it off, and you just lure people in, and then they're really, really disappointed when you don't actually answer whatever it was that piqued their interest in the first place. And so then they're left, quite frankly, probably really frustrated and even potentially angry that they clicked on something and didn't get what they were expecting. Um, And so you can actually hurt your marketing efforts by using clickbait because you're getting clicks, but you're not getting the actual engagement that you want or need to move your client's business forward. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You'll say, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but, but. uh, Well, I can use an example in our mm -hmm. own business. We were testing, um, we were testing headlines for, for our YouTube videos. And one of the ones that we came up with was a really great hook, which was like the best secret for copywriting's best kept secret or something to that effect. The video didn't pay that off at all. It was a great hook. And we could use that for a completely different piece of a different video, a different piece of content, a different social, whatever. We could use it in some place, but we would have to have a payoff for that headline Mm-hmm. we couldn't go in with what we were doing before where, where there was no people would be left wait wait what's the secret what's the you didn't tell me 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm thinking just uh, when a a website, you do a Google search and a website will say like season three release date revealed. And you're like, oh, good. I want to know what the season three release date. And then you click in and they're like, we know that it was been renewed for season three, but we don't know yet when it's coming out. And it's it's the kinds of things where you go, ah, oh, I'm going to get this piece of information. I want to click through and get this piece of information, but you don't actually get the actual information. There's something misleading about it that makes it mm-hmm. intriguing to you, or it maybe it's not misleading, but they just don't pay off that information. And that's what gets when people go, ah, oh, clickbait. What they're truly angry about, what we are all angry about, is that you click through and you don't actually get the information that you were expecting to get, that you, that you were led to believe that you would get from that headline or that link or that piece of copy, whatever that is. So yes, is clickbait annoying? Absolutely. But clickbait is incredibly effective because it has the first half of a hook right? It gets people interested. It it intrigues them. It speaks to something that they want or maybe even that they need. But by definition, it's clickbait, not a true hook, because it doesn't actually pay it off on the back end. Once you click through or once you keep reading or once you never actually get the information. As a, as a marketer and as a copywriter, your job is to ensure that not only do you come up with great hooks for your clients, but that you also, first of all, pay off that hook, but also give information in a way that is that is useful, that is intriguing, and that gets them to keep reading. Because just a click over or just an open of an email or just, it's, it's not useful if they don't actually keep reading the copy in the rest of the the piece or in the email or uh, on the landing page or wherever it is that you're sending people. Kind of a quick one today, but it's a different a differentiation that uh, you need to make sure that you understand because uh, while hooks and paying off the hook are incredibly effective and will have a great positive impact on your client's copy, on the other hand, playing with Clickbait can have an incredibly negative effect on your clients, uh, in your client's business, on their relationship with their target audience, all of that kind of thing. It is very, very easy to lose an audience's trust. And as a copywriter, it's your job to make sure that your copy helps build that trust and doesn't do anything to, to jeopardize it. And that's one of the big differences between hooks and clickbait. Okay, so we've given you something to work on. Uh, if I were you, I would spend a little time looking at copy around you and evaluating the hooks that you see out there. First of all, evaluating hooks to see, all right, well, what is this? What makes it interesting to me? What piques my attention? Or who is the target audience for this? Just like we always say, go out there and evaluate copy. And then keep reading. Is it actually truly a hook? Do they pay it off? Or is it just clickbait? And if it is clickbait, how do you feel about the fact that you thought you were going to get this information and you didn't? So a little bit of an assignment, but as you know, it is always beneficial to look at the copy around you and not just look at it, not just read it, but evaluate it. So that is your assignment until next time when we will catch you in another episode. Bye, everybody. Like what you heard? Hit subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're ready to take the first step toward becoming a copywriter yourself, sign up for a free video training right here.